Okay, quick Wednesday morning radar update. I'm just going to uh, basically cover TM17 this morning before we, we buzz into what's moving today. What we will just cover is, uh, we'll cover it from the last time, well, the first time it hit the screens. So let me just zoom out, zoom this chart out and... Uh, We'll just see the trend of this stock since since the IPO. You know, it had a, an IPO breakout and it tried to move, and uh, there was a whipsaw. You can see where uh, I got stopped out here. Anyway, this stock based out, and it moved into like, like what looks like a bigger basing pattern. And we had some setups on TM17. This one here is what I would call an early bird setup. And what what you what you've got to do is you've got to remember that price action repeats. Whatever the fundamentals are, you know, price action of rising stocks have they step step. Is it is what it is, and um, you know, consolidations, trends, consolidations, trends, consolidations, trends, and then consolidation breakdown. So that's another thing I want to just get across there. You know, people tend to show the, the Stan Weinstein stage analysis and uh, they seem to think that every consolidation is a stop, uh, top. So, you know, when you when you ride a trend, they, they seem to sort of show it, you know, you ride the trend and then you're into a stage three top and then this should follow. No, you know, go back to William O'Neill, study trends and just remember that you know, stage one, stage two, early, early in, that would be early basis on an outlying stock, what goes on to trend well. Stage three, stage four would be medium to medium to late basis. And, you know, the occasional stock can go on stage seven, stage eight, you know. Think of um, Beaver Tree, I suppose, you know, that went on a long run, didn't it? But um, you know the the later you are in the cycle, you, the more the more sort of um, you, you you're looking for needles in haystacks. Um, whereas if you're buying the earlier sort of consolidations, you're gonna you know you're gonna get more sort of uh, you're gonna find more needles. <laughs> um, you're gonna find more more potential. You know, well, basically, even if you get stopped out on the journey, you, you're going to have smaller losses and then small gains. And then you're going to have reasonable gains. And then near the end of the cycle, they're, they're in the outliers camp, aren't they? So you've got to have this spatial awareness of where you're getting on board these things. So we'll just just remember the noise on social media and, and everyone everyone was pumping this thing because everyone was loaded in it and they were all saying how good it was up here. Um, and I drew a red line and, and immediately as I post this on social media, I lose 30 followers literally on the back of, you know, posting a red line on a chart. So, you know, we keep it real here at Trading Basis. You know, you've got to zoom out the charts so, so let's move on to where we are in TM17 now. Potentially, it, it's trying to do something, isn't it? It's bumped its head above these previous highs here, uh, but the low is here. So we call this, we call this a reverse vol base, meaning it's wider. It's something. It's a term we we use at trading bases. No one else uses it. But um, when we see this, we expect a pullback because the amount it's had to go to break out, it's used a lot of that energy. Now, I've drawn a coiling base on this side. So, so if this thing coiled up as the market, you know, shook off the last bears, you know, or, or the market went lower and this thing stayed in this channel and then it broke out, you know, the, the, the percent it has to do to break out is, you know, it hasn't used up all, all that energy, has it? You know, this is like an a spring unwinding and it's gone 40 to 50 percent just to break out you know um 
spend a few days above that breakout level. And uh, let me just uh, zoom out a bit. And in this scenario, if it coils up here, you're going to get a little bit more uh, bang for your buck on a breakout because the market is, is still heavy on stocks. I know we've got a little bit of a relief at the moment. The bottom could be in, it might not be in. Uh, stocks what pop will consolidate at some point. Very few will just go on a rip roaring run without any kind of entry. The good thing is, you know, if you buy breakouts, that's okay. You know, you, if, if you only buy pullbacks, you will miss those rip roaring stocks. So, just throwing out a few scenarios there. So, so how do we how do we take this trend of this potential bottoming pattern apart? Well, we just go we just go to the simplest way of looking at things there is. Dow theory. Active low. Potential higher low. I should have done that a, a better way, shouldn't I? Potential higher low. So active low, higher low, where's higher high? Higher high above above this line here. Well, what if you wanted to cheat that or you want to buy the pullback because you've seen the reverse fall? Well, reverse fall base. Well, we still haven't got a price action reversal. So so I call it the early bird. It's, it's, a, it's a more risky sort of uh, way of getting on board. You've got the. In fact, in fact, I'll go back to where we we talked about it. We talked about it here, and it's just gone sideways since. And I did exactly the same thing on the. I think I actually pulled it up. Let me have a look. Yeah. So on the twentieth of. Just bring up my screener. On the twentieth of the twelfth, twenty-two. There it is. TM17 was second for gas in the tank and the technicals were pretty beaten up. You know, it's still in a bear trend, but we got a swing long, you know, and we got to also hit the reversion swing area as well. It's, it's basically that means we got a reversal on a shorter term period, but against the primary trend. So we call that an early bird. It's a riskier setup. Uh, TM17 would have... St 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 Another thing I'll just point out, gas in the tank, 39%. Now, if I go to today's dashboard, I'm not going to I'm not gonna bring it all over, but um, today's dashboard, you know, gas in the tank, 30, nothing has changed. Those numbers might start to filter through slightly different, but in that time absolutely as no, nothing has changed in those numbers so you haven't learned anything new on the the prior rns's what have what have been put out on this so this is just a react reactionary rns to a bit of read across and this one here you know significantly ahead of market expectations well what does that mean what are market expectations that that is just uh you know it's just it doesn't mean anything to us, but this does. You know, we we know that it's year on year. We know the forward numbers are pretty good. So they're kind of saying they're going to be ahead of those numbers. It's nothing concrete. Nothing's really changed. The price action hasn't changed either since, the you know, it's just gone sideways. Uh, so the price action hasn't changed. So what am I trying to get across here? You know, there's a little bit of chasing RNSs, isn't there? You know, everyone who who, who traded on opinions here, and and it, it's the noisiest area area to trade a stock on a news day. News days are noise days, is what we say, and it doesn't change anything. The reward to risk of the the trade doesn't change anything. Trying to get in early and buy this because you think the RNS is good doesn't change anything. You know. Basically, you know, if you got in five percent higher, you could just you you could just basically position size for that same bracket, you know, a little bit higher, and and you know, if it's an outlier and it goes up two hundred percent, you you're not going to quibble over five percent, are you, at the beginning of this trade? 
that that is the reality on um you know it's a game of big winners small losers and you know i've never looked at any of our good trades and gone i wish i'd got in you know as soon as the rns came out or anything like or got in a little bit earlier on that day because they you know as you know these things that you're wrestling snakes in the noise if you're chasing chasing news intraday nothing has changed there's a little bit more uh guidance pinned to what we already know is is basically what i'm trying to say there so if you zoom out and see how, how stocks trade and it doesn't matter if you're an investor you know if you're if you're a short-term trader you're not going to be really looking at um illiquid stocks are you you're going to be looking at more liquid ones this is obviously quite liquid it's it's okay but um for me i like to sort of this kind of stock what's in an a in the aim the aim 100 tends it could it could be in the swing camp it could be in the trend camp but to be fair you know i i, I like to ride aim stocks you know more risky sort of end of the market stocks or bigger trends because they're more volatile they can trend further they have more beta you know so that's the thinking that the way i approach these things if i wanted to just trade a small swing in a stock well i can just go to the u.s market or or the more liquid uk ones and, and find you know 10 15 ideas what what are as good or or if not better well definitely better than uh what i'm seeing today in this but uh so yeah, the, the, I don't see any red flags, famous last words. It does kind of pass a threshold that I like to see in, in the, you know, what I like to trade towards. It's nice if they've got, you know, it's nice when the interims just, just add weight to, to the, you know, they, they do on the turnover. The turnover was up, up on the half on half. It's nice if you get it firing on more cylinders. Is what I'm trying to get across there, but um, it's you know you know it, it's it's going to be talked about. Well, well, we've already covered it in in the end of day dashboards, and I've kind of showed you what the way I I look at these. So how can you approach this if it did if it was an idea? You know, it fitted what you trade. Well, you can you can say, well, I'm wrong below here, and you can scale in. So you can say, I'm wrong below here, but if it goes above here, I will trail to here and add more or trail to the low because because it could do this and be in a, you know, not take the lows out and and just do a more volatile action than it's doing at the moment, you know. After good news, the stock could fade again is basically what I'm saying. You know, stocks will trade like stocks. So, so there is the, you know, you can scale into your position, you can buy your full position and then trail and add to your full position. You can buy your full position, trail, add, and actually lower the risk on, on, on the stop at the same time by buying more shares, but, you know, you're going to lose less than your initial bracket. So th there's different ways of doing that, and that's, that's what we call a methodology, you know, and so just just wanted to get these scenarios out i get a lot of messages on these these ones what i've gone through news and uh, it's a little bit of a fomo sort of trade in my world but uh it, it's what i'm trying to say is a fomo trade in my world today but it's in in the real world it is a constructive price action but very early and we call it an early bird because it's a little bit more risky as well there's no price action reversal yet hope that helps